So your nursery will have been supplied with little trees in individual 50 by 50 pots and we're going to plant these, pot them up, is what the term is, pot them up from the 50 by 50 size, these small pots, and pot them into these larger pots, PB3s. So over here we've got our big bag of recycled bags, about 500 in each one of these fertiliser bags, and these are second-hand bags used last season. And so the first thing you need to do is just fold them out. The reason why they're a PB3, they've got the label on them, plastic bag PB3, for some reason three means one and a half litres. Go figure. But anyway, so we make a, put our hand in them, make the bottom of the bag flat. And I find it quite useful to make, simply make a big pile of potting mix in the middle of the table and have the students around the table just all chewing into this with their hands. Now with these bags the whole idea of the bag is that top edge needs to be smooth. If it's got a tear in it then we want to throw the bag away. The reason is this acts as a bucket and we need about a centimetre, centimetre and a half, about yay wide, of freeboard so that when the pot fills up with water it allows time for the water to drain into the pot. If it's too full the water will just flow off like a roof. This is one of the main reasons that plants die in a nursery is that the pots are filled up too high with potting mix and so we need that one centimetre down to allow the water enough time to soak into the pot. The second main reason is that the plants themselves are too deep into the potting mix around that stem right at the at where it hits the dirt hits the potting mix there are little holes breathing holes and if those holes are too deep just like i would drown if my the water level went over my nose or my mouth those holes need to be above the surface of the soil otherwise the plant will drown it'll die again the second most high reason for plants dying in a nursery they're planted too deep so I've got to put some potting mix on the bottom of this pot, so I just pick up a handful, maybe two, and then test, and it's about the right height. And then take the pot, put my fingers around it so the, the tree comes up between two fingers, turn it upside down, and I simply tap it quite vigorously on the side of the, side of the, and then pull it out. It'll come out in a root ball. And so I stand that root ball in the middle of the pot, middle of the pot, because we've got a weed mat to go around it, the, has, the stem has to be in the middle because that's where the hole is and then I'm simply going to fill that pot up with potting mix and overfill it. Then I pick up the pot and bang, just dump it on the ground, dump it on the table and I press it down to make it quite firm. Not, I don't go banging it like it's not a, it's not a post, I'm not pushing it in with my thumbs, just pushing it down quite firmly. I check this in the centre and then I pull this back and I should see the top of the original, you can see the moss there was the top of the original where it was growing and the, and the stuff I put in at the same height. So that's the same height as that. That's perfect. And then also it's one and a half centimetres down from the top edge of that pot. And that gives this pot enough um, room for that whole thing to fill up with water and then it allows time for it to drain into the pot itself. If it's like this, the top of the potting mix gets dry and this will act like a roof and it'll just wash the, the water will just wash off the top and that plant will not get any water at all. And so that's why they die, even though you've got the watering system turned on. Lastly, that needs to be more in the center. So I simply just put my finger in there and push some potting mix around to that other side and that'll just shift it over that half centimetre until it's in the middle of the pot. Each school gets several trays of these plants and you've potted them on. As you do it, could you please put these pots back into the trays as you do it? The reason is, is that it saves us a lot of time when we're back here in the nursery when we're pricking these out for ourselves and you as well, but also if you stack them like this, they 
get welded together when they dry out and they're almost impossible to get apart. So could you please put them back into the trays as you pop them up. And then what we do is we put the trees into a tray, one of these nursery trays, and we put them in three wide and four, four deep, so you get 12 on a tray. And then we can take that whole tray over into the nursery. Sometimes that's a bit heavy for people. When you're moving, try not to move plants individually if you can, but when they're in this tray like this, I can move three at once by simply pinching the plastic together. And I can lift all three at once just with two points of contact. They absolutely, um, and it's quite quick. There's three, I like lines and close together so the pots don't fall over. Um, and they hold each other up, so they're quite tight together. And then I put them out in lines. And you can see here, these pots are quite a lot too much low. We've had some students and they haven't quite picked up on the fact that they need to be full. Um, but at least they're e uh, empty, they're not too full, so they will get some water, so they'll still grow. Just won't grow as big as these other ones. We then water these ones from the top. So I'm gonna put about half a watering can onto these pots. This is the main water they get, and I'll water them until they are absolutely soaked. So that bucket effect it fills up to the top of the, of the pot. When I've got half a, half a watering can's worth, I'll just leave it. And then the final operation is to, again, put some weed mat. So these round weed mats have got a hole in the middle of them. They're made of paper so that the paper will biodegrade. And the idea is that weed seeds need light to germinate. So by stopping the light with the paper, the weed seeds underneath there, even though they're on potting mix, will not germinate. So you simply split them and put a weed mat in. That's why it's so critical with the plant in the middle of the pot. The weed mat, only they're quite thin, so you've got to make sure you only use one piece of paper. And then finally, you're given some fine shingle, and the shingle is simply to stop the weed mats blowing away in the wind. So we want a fairly good covering, not a huge covering. We don't, certainly don't want to cover it totally, as you run out of shingle. Probably 20 or 30 bits of shingle on each weed mat will stop that, that paper blowing away. And they will now grow happily for the rest of the season. Might have to pull a few weeds out, but that's done.